Why do we need a broad knowledge? For the old processor design, I worked with the people in the operating system and compiler that was uh, sufficient. But now we have a new SOC, we need to know a little bit more. Some people say maybe not necessary, but I do believe there are more there we need to know in order to be a good architect. In addition to a processor, we need to know a little bit of real-time operating system kernels and virtualization networking. And also I spent time installing Linux myself, developing Android apps and Facebook app and database and JavaScript. And so you really know what is the application. Today, I'm going to focus on the real-time operating system. Specifically, one of the algorithms is very classical called rate monotonic scheduling. So that's the first part I will discuss today. It's really nothing confidential. I learned that in school. It's one semester's work. I will try to save you time, comprise in just a few minutes. This material I presented at seminars a couple of times and got a good feedback. What is the scheduling? You have a, a single CPU, for example, here that's shared by different task there's an operating system scheduler trying to schedule the task from multiple sources so some terminology will come back here to visit this page uh, in the part two but I want to point out one of the terms is least upper bound so you have to really think about the upper bound it give you a maximum the least give you actually a smallest think about this term when we discuss this so what is the schedulability you have a different task for them or Here's a task, we have a, a period of four. So this task repeat every four period. And the execution time is specified, the blue is only one time unit. This is another example, it's a period of five. Every five period it will repeat and they need a two time unit. The third example here is you have a period of seven. Our goal is for all three tasks to meet the scheduling. So this is a classification of a different scheduling algorithm. We'll come back in part two to revisit more, but I want to point out today's topic is in this path. We have a either a soft or hard, and we have, we have a hard deadline, dynamic or static. We have a static, we have a preemptive algorithm. So this is our path. One of the algorithm here is called a read monotonic in this branch. The problem is given a hardware resource, the tax is preemptible, periodic, independent, and static. We need to find the CPU utilization and here we are not consider stack scheduling overhead because it's static and periodic. It's very small in, in our discussion, we ignore that. So this is a read monotonic scheduling. We assume it's one hardware resource, preemptible, periodic, independent, fixed priority, hard deadline. This theory was presented in the paper by Dr. Liu of MIT 1973. It assigns priority according to the period. A task with a shorter period has a higher priority. So if a task is shorter period, you have a higher priority. He proved this is the optimal static priority scheduling. Optimal means there's no algorithm is better than this one. At the most, it's just as good as this one. So here's an example. We have a two tasks. One task is a shorter period of a three, and the execution time one. The other is five, and execution of three. Task two has a period of five, it's longer. If we schedule task two first, it will look like this. The first schedule is task two. The task one will miss its deadline because the period of the first one is here. Neither the second of the task one start from here. Therefore, this miss. This is an example, if you schedule task two, it will fail. If we schedule task one first, then at this time we schedule second task. At this time, the first task also come in, it will preempt the second task. So instead of uh, executing the second task, this second task is shift here. The first one is preemptive because it, because it has a higher priority. The both tasks can be scheduled. So why this works? Because task one has a shorter period. Another example, you have a three tax, tax one, two, three. They have a different period, four, five, ten. Priority will be tax one, two, three in this order. This is animation, so all three can be scheduled. I don't want to spend too much time, just give you a highlight how to prove the rate monotonic is optimal. 
the first you have to consider two tasks. The second step have uh, some condition. And then the next proof I have to say, can you do better than read monotonic? So here is a few variables, P for period, C for execution time. Utilization is defined as execution time divided by period. You have a sum of the utilization. If you can schedule, that means the utilization is, is less than the number of our processors. Let's attempt to prove this. We have uh, two tasks. One is smaller period than the second one. So that's the assumption. This is what the task one and two look like. Schedule is feasible if the sum of the execution time is less than period one. So that's the first equation. Equation one, we define a variable called f. It's the ratio of p2 over p1 because p2 is bigger, therefore f is greater than one. You can plug in the f into equation one and get the, this following equation, which we call a. The formal proof we divide in two cases. One is the period is smaller than this. Second case is C1 is larger than this. There are this many requests of T1 before second request of T2, or this is true. So the largest allowed C2 is this many. Assume RM is used, T1 has a highest priority. It can schedule if the equation 2 is true. Remember equation 1 here? If it is not RM, schedule feasible is this. If it is a read monotonic, schedule if equation 2 is true. From equation 1, we multiply F. Since F is greater than 1, this is true. And we add in C1, and this is true. 1 holds, 2 holds as well. So let's look at the phase 2, which is C1 greater than this amount. So let's uh, now go to the detail schedule equation 3 is true. So we multiply 1 by f, this is true. Same reason, f is 1 and this is true. So it's very similar to case 1. So let's uh, calculate the least upper bound. That's a uh, uh, case 1. You use the previous equations. You use the definition of the utilization. Utilization is this. Inside the bracket is a negative number. So therefore, the utilization is decreasing as C1 increase. So case two, we have a similar formulas. Utilization is this. For the case two, the utilization increase as C1 increase. So let's represent this utilization in term of a, an intermediate variable G. So this will be in term of a G. So this is a very a good visualization, case one and case two, case one decreasing, case two increasing. So you have a minimum at this point, which is C1 equal to this value. So therefore we can prove for two tasks, the upper bound is precisely this amount, which is 83%. So this means if you have a two task, the best you can guarantee is 83%. If you have a more than two tasks, you have an N task. This is an example, you have three tasks, this upper bound is 78%. You can only guarantee 78% utilization. So this is a curve. You have a two task, 83%, 78, until you have a infinite task. So the infinite task is 69.3%. That's very amazing. It's a fixed number. So this is a just a similar curve. Of course, there are things response time analysis, which we will not focus uh, on this time. So response time, but the final question is, can read monotonic schedule everything? For example, this example, it will miss the deadline. This one is missed. Of course, there are dynamic algorithm we can use to resolve this problem. We're not going to discuss this time. So summary. I just want you to come away with this video with one thing. If you have infinite number of tasks, it's 69.3 utilization you can guarantee using the static algorithm. Of course, if you want to know three tasks is 78% and two tasks is 83%, if you want to be geek, you can memorize this square root. That's more impressive. But to me, I only remember this number.